yeah, just, I mean, part of it is relief that this uh, plan we had to get here to ride this almost perfect ride came together on the day. So there is that element of relief. And then obviously just the, the joy of, of breaking the world record. Well, not just breaking it, absolutely smashing a world record um, to times that I never thought possible. Um, and we just pushed that that sport onto new new bounds. So uh, I think we're, we're both over the moon with that. What a day, what a day. Yeah, and the, the thing is, um, like, like Neil says, we're trying to push the sport further and further. And so um, it's always been an interesting one that, that you know, tandem racing at the Paralympics has not been there for, for that long, you know, the last 20 years or so, I think, to be honest. Um, but then before that, before that time, it was a, it was sort of an able-bodied sport. We had two, two sighted, you know, able-bodied riders on, on the tandem. And, and they would always go to a, a world championships and they'd be faster than, than the solo riders. So it's nice to, you know, it's fantastic to come here and, and now do a time which, which is faster than, than, um, than what able-bodied riders are doing at this point. So it just goes to show that, you know, at the end of the day, that, you know, para sport is, I guess, impossible to ignore, to use that, to use that line. And, and, you know, the performances that, that, that disabled people can do, uh, you know, absolutely outrageous. So it's, it's been, it's been incredible to be part of, part of that journey. And I'm proud to, proud to have been able to pull on the GB jersey and, and, and come along on that journey. Yeah, I mean, I mean, a lot of it did, did come about due to coronavirus, really, but obviously we weren't able to train together for quite a while. Um, and when you're apart and you don't see each other for a while, you kind of, you don't really realise what the other person is doing. And I'm, I'm notoriously bad for getting in touch with people. I'm, you know, so I never really get in touch to see how Matt's doing. And he's one of those guys who definitely needs a chat now and again. <laughs> he's, a, he's a social animal. So I think it's caused that a bit of friction from us. I don't know if Matt would mind us saying that, you go back to last summer and I remember this argument in track center because we weren't happy with each other and how we were approaching things and it almost blew uh, the uh, the cobwebs and they both realized that this gold was what we both were aiming for and we just needed to approach things in a different way so it's not all been plain sailing by any means we're we're a couple or a relationship like anyone else you know it's the ups and downs so the fact we can actually put that behind us and come along and, and get this gold is just incredible uh, an absolute unforgettable day we've we've both been to, to many games before and never had this moment in london i got the gold laura lost out due to mechanical failure on her bike in rio she won the gold and, and i came away with a silver that i was gutted with at the time so we didn't have that shared joy and then you know we've spoken about this day for so long but there's also a lot of nerves and a lot of things have to fall into place to to make it happen and the fact that we both managed to to get the gold and break world records i mean it's just, uh, yeah, like I say, unforgettable. Um, and there was a period of time where I couldn't get to Laura to give her a hug because we had to go to our ceremony and then she had her ceremony and there was press. And eventually we managed to come together and, and hug and, and Laura burst into tears, which made me burst into tears. And yeah, just a, a moment that we'll never, ever forget, no doubt. Yeah, well, I mean, I think we're both planning to, to keep going at this, you know. Um, had the games happened last year, I might have walked away from it. I was at a point where I wasn't enjoying cycling that much. But that chance to, to kind of reflect and do things differently, I absolutely am in love with it again. Um, and the beauty is we've got potentially Commonwealth Games next year, whether we'll be riding together or against each other, I don't know. Um, then there's World Championships in Glasgow, which for me would be another home championships. And then you've got one year till, till the next Games in Paris. It's only three years from now. It's pretty tempting, so I'm certainly going to continue. And I mean, Matt's still young; he's got a, a hell of a future in front of him if he wants. Oh yeah, well, I mean, I've I've always said I mean, cycling's in my blood, really, and not from my parents or anything. It's just since I found it when I was a young lad, like it's just been it's just been my life ultimately. And so, you know, it doesn't mean I've not got other things going on, but like I I just love doing this, and I want to do it for as long as I can. And then even when I retire from sort of elite sport and and go on to other things like I'll still be riding my bike and still trying to race so yeah we'll always be still, still be on a bike or in a gym and just training so yeah looking forward to a, a couple of weeks of just downtime got some concerts and and festivals and that kind of thing